We have an outbreak that has spread around the world rapidly through new modes of transmission about which we understand too little and which meets the criteria in the international health regulations. For all of these reasons, I have decided that the global monkeypox outbreak represents a public health emergency of international concern. Monkeypox is a virus in the same family as smallpox. Traditionally, transmits from small animals to humans in highly endemic areas, primarily in Africa. And we've been used to having very small outbreaks, primarily in Africa, where there's transmission to a human, a human transmits to a couple more people. This time around, it's different because now we have an outbreak where the mode of transmission is primarily uh, through sexual contact, primarily currently transmitting uh, within the community of men who have sex with men through direct contact with deletions or with bodily secretions. And it is starting to reach the level of what we would call a public health emergency or pandemic because we have sustained transmission within multiple countries in the world. The concerning part, initially, at least for us in the U.S., all of the cases were imported. They had a travel history to Europe where this uh, outbreak started. Uh, but now we have local transmission. We're having transmission in multiple cities in the U.S. Mode of transmission for monkeypox is through contact with lesions or bodily secretions. That's perhaps the most efficient way to get it. There is transmission through droplets or aerosols, but that really requires very prolonged contact in close quarters. So we're talking about six to eight hours in a closed room with somebody to get it that way. It is currently being transmitted sexually, but it's not a sexually transmitted infection in the sense of what we know sexually transmitted infection. So normally STIs, we think of syphilis, gonorrhea, uh, things like that that exclusively transmit in the sexual way. It is estimated that about 90% of people are just gonna have deletions without any complications. They are really painful. When we talk to patients, they have excruciating pain and we do need to do some heavy pain control with them. So it's not a walk in the park uh, when you have the lesions. And about 10% of people, primarily people who are immunocompromised, can get severe presentations. And for this 10% of people that will have a severe presentation, we have therapeutic options. The lesions are highly infectious and people can transmit the virus while they have the lesions. Most people resolve them within two to three weeks. And basically you're considering infectious until all the lesions have crusted and all the crusts have fallen off. We strongly recommend people who have it to stay at home, isolate from others, and obviously not to be out in the community. Again, because this is primarily being transmitted through a network of men who have sex with men, obviously, refrain from having sex while you have lesions. So testing is a big, big, big item for prevention. Testing is key to identifying and identifying is key to isolating, which breaks the transmission chain. As far as vaccines, there is a very limited amount of vaccines in the United States. They're being distributed to the states according to the number of population at risk and the number of cases as well. And at this point, we don't have nearly enough. So health departments are prioritizing high-risk populations and high-risk behaviors. So that if you're a man who has sex with men and you've had multiple partners in the past month, you're eligible. Otherwise, they're not really vaccinating the general population or people at lower risk. To date, we have distributed more than 300,000 vaccines to jurisdictions around the country. FDA is working quickly to finalize the approval of nearly 800,000 additional doses, and we are getting ready to ship these doses to jurisdictions once FDA has finally approved them. I've been telling people we need to remain calm right now. You're not going to go to the grocery store and get it from touching, you know, produce or anything like that. 
but we are at a very crucial point where we need to contain it and eradicate it within this current group of transmission before it makes the jump into household transmission, office transmission, and community transmission, right? So no cause for alarm right now, but we do have a small window of opportunity to sort of quash it.